my father like I'm Naruto. Keep the blade on me, Ichigo. Who really wanna go toe for toe? TTR from Tokyo. Diamonds flipping up on the stove. Lucky man like a four leaf glow. Diamonds wanna go. Hey everyone, it's me, Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys are having an awesome day for today. And as the title states, I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to install RetroArch on your Luma CFW 3DS. And this does work on every model 3DS. So whether you have a 2DS, 3DS, or even like the new 3DS and all of those variant models, um, as long as you have some type of custom firmware or as your system is modified in some shape or form and you can install stuff via with FBI, then you can be able to run RetroArch. And I am pretty excited to show showcase this video for today since this is going to be my very first video i'm going to be um showcasing on the 3ds on my channel you guys probably know me for you know mostly all playstation stuff but this is my very first um you know tutorial on a nintendo console but with that being um stated out the way as well i highly do recommend to go ahead and follow my social media so you know the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel so by following me on twitter that's where i usually update my fan base when i drop my latest content on my channel of course by being a subscribe and hitting that notification button as well that's how you guys know when i drop my latest content whether it be for now the 3ds but i usually of course drop content for the vita ps4 ps3 psp and all of that fun stuff um with that being stated out the way as well if you want to be in a mix of things or you just want to join my official community you could go ahead and join my discord i will have that in the link in the description down below not only you can meet new people from the hacking and modding community uh, however you can also get support for your favorite consoles so if you have a question about like this topic right here for the 3ds via with retroarch or you have a question for the ps4 in terms of homebrew or vita and all of that fun stuff you could go ahead and ask in my support channels and i'll have basically um people out there to help you as well as me i usually help people in terms of you know any type of questions they may have in terms of modding but with all that fun stuff getting out the way with the social medias and discords if you guys do want to support my channel in any shape or form i do take donations so if you want to become a patron you can feel free to join via in the link in the description down below or in the card that is showcased here anytime that you guys support me by becoming a patron you help with the overall development of my channel and you help with you know me providing the best quality content for you guys to watch as well i do take a second form of donation of course any donations i get is purely optional for my excuse me fans and supporters but if you do want to support my channel you can feel free to donate via my paypal i will have that in the link in the description down below but with all that fun stuff getting out the way in terms of donations and social medias and discord and stuff like that what we're going to do is go ahead and get started for the prerequisites for the 3ds and everything that i do stay i will have in the download description and below as i do all my videos and i will also leave you know useful links for any topics that we're going to be talking about for today so i'm assuming that you have any 3ds model that's already hacked in some shape or form for today's video i'm going to be using luma cfw 10.0.1 and this is the latest um cfw or custom firmware as of october 2nd 2019 um you need fbi title manager or any title manager to install cias and basically um i'm going to be using fbi for this method you also need the latest build of retro arc and i'll show you guys on how to get that on the pc you also need a set of roms that corresponds with your retro arc cores or basically Basically embedded on um, RetroArch emulator so if you ever use RetroArch on a PlayStation Vita PS3 or PC or whatever device you have you know what basically cores are but I'll go into a little more of that in a second um you also need a micro SD card reader so you could read your SD card unless you have a laptop that could automatically do that I'll be using a micro SD card reader and of course you need your Nintendo 3ds micro SD card for this process um as showcased on a screen this is the micro SD card I am using via from Amazon um they they really don't cost that much i got mine for seven dollars um back in the day and i will have that in the link in the description down below any um card reader works for this process but just to showcase if you guys new um to the 3ds modding scene this is a sd card reader you could you know plug into your desktop or your laptop if it doesn't already have a um, micro sd card reader now assuming that you are still interested in doing this and you may not have a hack device i do recommend to go ahead on 3dshack.guide.com and this basically is what the method i use on how to successfully you know jailbreak my 3ds and it goes into very great detail i'll showcase in the screen so if you basically um follow all of the directions which are very you know clear and thorough um basically if you go through all of the steps you'll be able to um you know 
hack your 3ds and of course there are a ton of guides um outside of youtube and stuff like that if you really wanted to know on how to jailbreak your console as well i may be doing my own jailbreaking guide later on and you know in the future but just getting stated that out the way if you guys wondering on how to hack your 3ds this is the website i use for this process but um with that being out the way in terms on how to hack your uh, 3ds or 2ds device i do want to go ahead and go over some of the listed of supported cores and emulators that retro arc um supports i won't be reading through all of these but this is all of the retro arc cores that um 3ds supports so just to eyeball right now they have you know atari 7 800 they also have mame they also got fb alpha final burn they have csp 1 2 and 3 those are some cool ones that i liked from um RetroArch itself. There's also, of course, all the Nintendo ones like Game Boy Color, GBA, SNES, um, the original NES. There's a bunch of emulators for that. There's also a, a bunch of emulators for, you know, Sega Genesis, um, the Mega Drive. Also, they have a PlayStation 1 one. It doesn't run too well on the um, 3DS as of yet, but I think um, in a few or just six days ago, they are releasing a better version or maybe a nightly build in RetroArch for PS1 games to run better. I'll probably have it um, edited in this video on the screen to showcase here about a little article. So if you guys are interested in that, which I am as well in terms of, you know, future emulators and core is getting supported better on RetroArch. I will have that in the card below. But all that um getting out the way in terms of all the emulators and cores, I just want to give a special thanks out to the RetroArch developers and also any of the 3DS developers that allows you know homebrew on our system. So shout out to you guys and don't forget if you need any help, you can feel free to join my Discord. But with that being said, let's go ahead and own the PC and get started. Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, what we're going to do is go ahead and get started on the PC side of things first. So first thing what we need to do is go ahead and open up any browser of your choice. I'm going to be using Google Chrome for this. And what we need to do is go to our RetroArch page platforms, aka our downloads. I will also have this in a link in the description down below. And what we need to do is go ahead and scroll all the way down till we see our 3DS um, section for here. So let me go ahead and find it. All right, so yeah, once you see um the 3DS and 2DS family, what we need to do is go ahead and download the CIA, and it will be in a .7 zip. So you make sure you have WinRAR for this process as well. I will always um have all my links in the description, of course. So I'll have WinRAR if you don't have this already installed, since we gotta extract this out to our desktop. But once um RetroArch has successfully installed onto your PC or has been downloaded, what we're gonna do is go to our downloads folder or wherever you have your stuff located. So let me go to my downloads and this is what uh, RetroArch for the 3DS looks like from here. All we need to do now is just basically um, wait for it to do its thing. So it's right here on my desktop. All we got to do is go ahead and open this with one more. I'm just going to go to extract files and put it in a separate folder on my desktop. And what it's basically doing now is extracting all of the contents within RetroArch itself. So here is what it's doing right here. So what I'm going to do actually right now is cut the video since it may take like four minutes to um, get it processed. And then once all my files have successfully transferred over, I'm going to go ahead and come back. All right, guys, so I showcase here, here is the RetroArch CIA folder. It's basically extracted out from the actual 7-zip file right here. So what we're going to do is go into the RetroArch CIA folder that has now been extracted. And you should already have two folders within this um, RetroArch CIA folder. So the CIA folder is what we're going to be installing with FBI. And what we need is basically RetroArch right here. And this is basically what we need to go ahead and transfer over to our SD card. One thing what we need to do now first is when you go into this retro arc folder here you want to go ahead and create a new folder and name it roms just like this you could name it lowercase and this is where we're going to be putting all of our roms in and i'll show you guys on how to do that in a second but what we need to do now is go ahead i'm going to minimize out this window i'm going to go and open up a random window on my pc and i'm going to go ahead and plug in my sd card as showcased here and i'm going to go 
and showcase my SD card for my uh, 3DS. So if your 3DS is already hacked and modded, you already should have Luma and all of this stuff right here. But what we need to do if you already not, or basically if you don't already have a CIAS folder, just create a new folder on your desktop by either right clicking and hitting new folder and name it as CIAS in a lower case like this. And this is where we're gonna be dropping our um, RetroArch CIA file from here. So in our CIA folder here, we're just gonna go ahead and go to RetroArch3DS.CIA. I um, already have basically an older version of it, but that's okay for now. Um, once you have that file transferred over, what we're going to do is go back to our RetroArch folder, go onto the root of our SD card, and we're going to put RetroArch right here via on the root of our 3DS. So right now, it's basically transferring over the individual CIA um, folders or files right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just let it do its thing, cut the video, and then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and transfer our game of, or basically all of our games of choice to our SD card as well. Alrighty, so as showcased here, all of my Nintendo NES original games has been transferred over into the ROMs folder right here. So let me just show you guys that I have all of my NES games into one folder. Of course, if you're going to do more, make sure they're labeled by the system it's coming from. So if you have your Super Nintendo games, go into that folder, make sure your ROMs is there. But assuming that you got, you know, the gist of how to do this, what we're going to do is minimize out this um, folder right here. Go to our, um, basically our hidden icons here. We need to go to safely remove our hard drive basically so we won't have a corrupted SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and inject out my uh, SD card slot storage. And then from here guys, what we need to do is go to our 3DSs and plug in our SD card and then get it to the boot screen. Alrighty guys, so as showcased here, what we need to do is go ahead and plug in our SD card into our 3DS. And then once we do that, what we need to do is go ahead and power up our system. And I'm just waiting for mine to boot up. And then once our system has successfully boot up, what we're going to do now is basically just wait for it to um, pop up on the screen. And then what we need to do is go ahead and run FBI. So I'm already assuming that you already have FBI installed on your um, 3DS since you're, it's already hacked. So once you run FBI as showcased here, what we need to do is go to our SD card. We need to scroll all the way down to CIA. And then from here, what we need to do is go into our RetroArch underscore 3DS and install the CIA file. It won't take too long um, for it to do it since the file is not large at all. And then once we do that and it has it successfully installed, we're going to go ahead and boot out from our screen. You should get a notification that new software has been applied onto your system. So go ahead and open it up. And what we need to do now is run the RetroArch app. So once um, RetroArch is now booting, you'll basically see the original or kind of the older GUI. If you want the XMB GUI that kind of looks like the PlayStation 3's uh, main menu, I'm going to show you guys on how to do that right now in a second. So what we need to do now um, is scroll all the way down to our settings, scroll into um, driver, go into menu, make sure you toggle it to XMB. Go back. Now you want to go to the configuration file and save current configuration. And now what you want to do is boot out of virtual arc. So the next time we boot up, we'll get the um, X and B that will showcase, or basically we're going to get the GUI that will showcase the X and B. So what I'm doing here is waiting for a uh, virtual arc to boot up now. Um, if it does, or excuse me, if it does take too long to boot up, just go ahead and restart your 3DS. But as showcased here, what we're going to do is go and wait for it to pop up onto the actual GUI or the XMB main menu for RetroArch. A few moments later. All right, guys. So as showcased here, you can see that my menu has changed now to the XMB one we just set since we saved the configuration. But now what we're going to do is go ahead into our core section right here, and we need to go ahead and select our core. So I'm selecting the Nintendo NES core since I only have the NES games, but just go ahead and select the core you want to go ahead and test for your selective ROMs. It may take like 20 seconds for it to boot up since it's installing the core directly onto your 3DS, I believe. So don't worry if your screen turns black for too long. If it's more than a minute or two minutes, just go ahead and repeat the process. But um, 
once it's now um finished installing what we're going to do is go ahead and find our content or aka where our games are located and then we're going to go ahead and test the game to run so i'm just waiting for it to do its thing so it's basically done now we need to go to our load content folder go into the option right here scroll all the way down to our retro arc open that up we need to go into our roms folder right here and wherever you have your games located into its respective folder as i stated go ahead and select your rom of choice i'm going to be doing a uh, super mario uh right here so once um it's done what we're going to do is load up our current core so just click a and then it may take a little while for it to do its thing i noticed that the initial setup for this may take um some time so don't worry if you seem like your 3ds froze it's not it's just taking a while for it to boot up the um title so once um the process is finished what it's going to do is basically read the rom or whatever game of choice um it's going to load it up and then you should be able to play just fine so as showcased here here's super mario bros right now i'm just going to go ahead and do a little gameplay through it not too sure why the audio is like you know kind of distorted for super mario so i'm gonna just basically turn it down but as showcased here, here is Super Mario um, Bros. 25th Anniversary running on my 3DS. I'll just turn up the audio once again just to show that audio does work with this. It's probably some settings I need to change. But yeah, this is essentially on how to um, run classic, you know, emulated games on your modded 3DS. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. With that being said, I'm out. Thank you guys for watching. Hey everyone, it's me Nagato. I just want to say thank you all for all of the love and support I've been receiving throughout, you know, me starting um, YouTube just six months ago. I recently just hit 2K subscribers, so I'm just saying thank you guys for who always, you know, support me, you know, join my Discord and all of that fun stuff. And, you know, just been, you know, showing me love throughout my YouTube journey and creating modding tutorials for you guys. Um, but with that being out the way, I do want to state one thing for my channel, and I really want to know how did you um, really like this video if you did enjoy it let me know in the comment section down below because i do planning on you know making more 3ds content i just want to see if it's pretty popular on my channel since i still want to focus on mostly on the playstation side of things in terms of like the ps3 vita and ps4 but if you guys do like these 3ds tutorials for me uh let me know So he's smooth.